I'm trying to think of how to break this news. It's kind of, well, critically important, so to speak. Now, you got to look at it as, well, a choose-your-own-adventure kind of scenario. Remember, you always got choices. You can either make choices that are going to be beneficial. Some people use the word good. I don't think in terms of that. Beneficial to you and everybody else. Or you can make choices that are going to be detrimental to you and everybody else. But you always got choices. So cut it out with the magical alien in the sky that looks after you and controls over you and makes you do good and bad. You know, fairy tales like that should end once you are able to walk and you're not crawling around anymore. That's bullshit. So you got choices. In America, you got one of the biggest choices post-COVID. You got one of the biggest choices post-COVID. Everybody around the world has now choices. In America, your choices, well, it's crystal clear. Now, I don't want to say everything, so I'll say what I can say. The choice is a binary choice, so to speak, America. Your choice is, well, your country, America, the country, or white supremacy. Now, I know what somebody's thinking. We can have our cake and eat it too. It's always been like this, purple people's house. It can stay like this for sure. I know. The thought has popped into your mind. Unfortunately, I'm here to break some news that that is not the case going forward, post-COVID. You see, pre-COVID, you could do things. But we're post-COVID. And this is the new normal. They told you fuckers that. You just don't listen. You think everybody's out to get you. When in fact, that couldn't be more farther from the truth. Actually, they're looking out for you. For once, they're trying to look out for you. They're trying to warn you. But it could be like the boy who cried wolf. Where you've been lied to so much so that now that they're actually sort of kind of telling you certain elements of the truth, you're just over it. You gotta really listen to what everybody's saying before you make a determination, even if you're biased. It would be best for all of us to have an open mind. Keep an open mind about things. There's things that none of us still know fully. So roll with that. But I do know, America, you got a choice. It's the country versus white supremacy. You see, they're trying to say well, it's about a stolen election. Oh, really? Is it really about a stolen election? Now, the main culprit, deep down, 
inside that void of complete and utter darkness knows that well his ass got shellac for better terminology you know the dude that spent a lifetime getting famous for firing the American people got his own ass fired about a year ago and well not being able to handle it because well when you're a narcissistic psychopathic lunatic defeat is not handled very well and well you start to convince yourself that well you didn't really lose it was stolen from you you see he was starting to get worried back in June when he was holding rallies and everybody was at home trying to figure out what COVID is and you remember he tried to hold a rally on the anniversary of well the Tulsa race massacre but a couple of conservatives who happened to be of color advised him not to do such a thing he wouldn't go over it and so he decided oh well let me not do that it was Juneteenth I believe and right around the Tulsa massacre he's like let me not do that in Oklahoma now, that being said, was it really about a stolen election when he himself said he wouldn't accept the results back in June? So you got July, August, September, October, and then November to come up with all types of lies about, well, how the election was stolen. Because you remember he came before the American people as the ballots were going out and being mailed to millions of citizens in this country. He said if it was up to him, the ballots wouldn't go out. He didn't want to have an election because he knew he was going to lose. So, of course you're going to lie after you lose. But there's so many people that really want to believe the lie. Desperately want to believe the lie. Now, we've always had contentious elections in this country. Yes, far contentious elections. Far closer elections. Even elections determined by the House of Congress. Elections determined by the Supreme Court because of 500 votes litigated for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. So we're used to contentious elections in America. But what was different about it this time that led hundreds of thousands of Patriots, we'll call them that. We know what they really are, but we'll use their terminology. What led to patriots exercising their patriotic duty to loot, ransack, attack, deface, defecate? in the nation's capital building. What led to that? We've had contentious elections. I'll tell you what led to that. White supremacy led to that. You see, it had been a four-year operation, so to speak, of white supremacy under Donald Trump. He told you, MAGA, make America great again. 
He wanted to make America white again. You see, they tell you right out in the open what they want to do. And in order to achieve this, the fear had to have a campaign of terror. And that's what he did. He terrorized everyone. His supporters, his detractors, his haters, kept bleeding out their terror each and every day. Side note, I find it funny conservatives or people over there want to talk about division when they had no problem with their leader, their chosen leader, going on Twitter every day being as divisive as any living creature on this planet has ever been towards whole entire groups of people. I find it interesting that now you want to talk about division. Your cult leader called all types of names, slurs, innuendos, lies, and you said nothing. But now you care about division. Sure. I'm sure you do. You know why they didn't say anything? Let me elaborate. Because they're not clean in this either. In 2019, the third year under the Fuhrer wannabe, the reincarnation of Adolf Hitler wannabe. In his third year, in 2019, hate crimes in America. You know, crimes that people commit just because they hate another group or identity or ethnicity of another person. Hate crimes were up tenfold in 2019. And in 2020, there were more reported hate crimes than ever reported in the history of this country. Now, you can factor in COVID, yes. But you have to also factor in the rhetoric that was going on during the campaign and what his supporters were doing to people who opposed him. You know how they came in a caravan through Portland, shooting paintballs at citizens who lived in Portland. You know how they tried to run an opposition bus off the road in Texas. Have you ever seen a group of any other supporter get in pickup trucks with their flags flying of the opposition candidate? literally trying to murder people on a freeway in the United States of America. Hey Texas, did you prosecute those motherfuckers? Probably not. Those are your racist buddies that you go to dinner with, right, Go Governor Greg Abbey? Right, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick? Those are your homies. That was a crime what they tried to do. Road rage, attempted murder. Yet Texas didn't prosecute it. I wonder why. You know, sort of kind of like how a group of white supremacists back in March of 2020 were plotting to kidnap the governor of Michigan put her on some kind of kangaroo trial and execute her on Facebook Live. You know, these people, they're not divisionists. They're patriots. They're not traitors and insurrectionists. They're patriots. Sure, you tell that to whoever you can try to convince to believe that bullshit. Don't tell it to us. 
We don't believe it. Anyway, you can't have the country and white supremacy. You got to choose. And this is a difficult cho choice for Americans. They're used to having white supremacy. And plus enjoying the benefits of the country. It just so happens you can't do that any longer. And that's what's causing what I want to term the Sour Clean Brigade meltdown. It's causing pandemonium out there. That they can't get away with being racist anymore to the general public. Oh, Paul Gozar, you can't make an anime video depicting the murder of a Latina congressional member of Congress, your co-worker? How sad. Don't cry for me, Argentina. I'm shedding tears. Oh, Kyle Rottenhouse, you can't go and travel from Antioch to Kenosha and murder two people because you disagree with their ideology and the Black Lives Matter movement? You mean you have to take some accountability for your actions? Oh no, we've never taken any accountability for our actions. This is unspeakable. I want to protest. I want to go to a school board meeting and raise my my lungs. I want to do Nazi salutes. I want to tell people they should murder themselves. This is liberty and I have no liberty anymore. Fuck you and fuck your liberty. Goodbye. You gotta make a choice now. It's either the country or white supremacy. And I know you're like, oh no, you don't have to make a choice. You're just being dramatic. No. You see, I've already done the steps necessary to ensure that I'm sound on my foundation of what I speak prior to speaking. So I know what you have to do. It's up to you. I can't make choices for you. This choice is yours. It's uniquely American. I don't want to impartial the jury, so to speak. I know what I'm going to do. But you fuckers each have to individually decide what you want to do. And don't try to say that somebody made you do it. No. Remember. Is solely your choice alone. That's how it should be. Liberty and freedom for all, right? So we've established that nobody's ever stormed and looted the Capitol before. So what led to that? We've established this white supremacy. White supremacy has been around in this country for a long time, too. So you're like, it can't just be that. You're right. It's not just that. It's something else. Let me explain. It's like a cocktail. There's a number of ingredients in the cocktail to make it taste the way it tastes. The final ingredient in this cocktail of pure, unadulterated evil, masquerading as holy and pious, of course, is that, well, anytime there's a particular type of advancement of a particular type of group of people in this country, you see a backlash. Now, notice that, well, Everybody is like, there's so much division in the society. Notice who's stating that. Notice 
when they didn't observe division in the society. You know, like when Barack Hussein Obama, emphasis on Hussein, Obama was president of the United States. When the Senate Majority Leader at the time, Mitch McConnell, before Barack Obama, had even had time to order the furniture, stated publicly that he planned to obstruct everything that the incoming president of the United States was planning to do. That's not divisionist, no. That's hospitality, don't you know? But wait, there's more. Remember, Barack Obama, he wasn't even born in the United States. He was an illegitimate president. Born in Kenya. And who was the leader of this lie? Who was the person that stood out to the masses? and declared that Barack Obama is not a United States citizen. And well, told all of America countless times this lie. Well, wasn't that Donald J. Trump? To the point where the first sitting African American president of this entire nation had to come out publicly and release his birth certificate. Now has any white president ever in the history of this country publicly released their birth certificate declaring that they're an American citizen? You won't know. They could have been born in Germany and en route to America. They weren't born on the soil. They're German. Why are they American presidents? But nobody's ever asked that question. Nobody ever thought that, well, it was necessary to ask. Except for Donald Trump when Barack Obama became president. But it has nothing to do with race. He was legitimately concerned that a biracial black man was not born in Hawaii, like he has publicly stated. But he was born in Kenya. He was legitimately concerned. And then it was, well, Barack Obama is a Muslim socialist. working with the Islamists. You remember all of that, right? None of that was divisionist. That's, that's hospitality. And now, and then you had, well, the death panels. Remember, the first African-American president was setting up death panels all across America. Your doctor was not going to be your doctor anymore. It was going to be some panel of people who you've never met before. And they were going to, well, sentence you to die. And they came to town halls in the masses, protesting against these death panels. That, well, Glenn Beck had told everybody that death panels were coming. You remember, he used to stand there in front of the whiteboard and tell people, that George Soros is linked to the Bilderberg Foundation and the Bilderberg funded Barack Obama. You remember all that bullshit, right? Well, it's been a while. Coming back to you now. Have you met up with your death panel yet? What was the outcome of your sentence? They came to town halls in the masses, protesting and shouting, misbehaving, the same way they're coming to the school board meetings. It's always the same group of people. And you have the Affordable Care Act. Everybody thinks that it's popular. You know how I know that? Millions of people who are protesting it are enrolled. All you fuckers that came to those town halls, but you're now enrolled in the Affordable Care Act. This is why I say Americans are liars. Take yourself off the enrollment now, during the global pandemic. Go ahead, 
You don't want government health care. Get off the roads. Leave. We can give it to some people out on the street that really need it. It's a death panel, don't you know? So, it wasn't divisive then when their soon to be future cult leader was doing all the division. But now there's so much division in our society. Something must be done about it. There's these liberal woke activists agitating the society. You see, there's two different stories parallel always in America. When white supremacists do something, it's not an issue. When people do anything to counter white supremacy, it becomes an issue. It's threatening. It's woke, as they say. Sure, and what was that mob of ugly, gremlin-type people who stormed the Capitol? What the fuck were they? They were definitely nope. It's a nope for me. Yeah, you're damn right. They're not woke. They're nope. Nope about everything since the very beginning. Bring nooses and Confederate flags into the Capitol building. And you want to talk about a woke society. No, America, you're still dead asleep. You're still savages and barbarians. Don't get it twisted. We all know. But you got to make a choice now. Do you want the country or do you want white supremacy? You can't have both. And see, that's what January 6th committee is about. They got to get to the bottom of it. They got to, well, hold the real people accountable for their actions. Because if you don't hold them accountable for their actions after what they did on display that day, it's only going to get worse. And it's already still going to get worse. But if you hold nobody accountable for what happened on January 6th, oh my goodness, you can't even imagine what they'll do and what we'll have to do. Because let me tell you, the viewers, our response will be unmerciful and it'll be brutal because your response will be unmerciful and brutal. Savages and barbarians. It's an American tradition as old as apple pie, don't you know? Tis the season. It's almost time to be thankful and grateful. What are you grateful for this year? Are you grateful for white supremacy or your country? Gotta make a determination. Gotta make a determination quickly. And here's the thing. The other element that was in that cocktail, you know, it kind of led to, well, that whole phenomenon, which we're going to talk about. I think they call it QAnon. Anyway, America, you got to make a choice. It's the country or white supremacy. And you say, well, purple people's out. We can keep dragging our feet. We can keep avoiding this choice. It's nothing that would necessitate that we have to make an immediate choice. You're sort of kind of correct. But you're also incorrect. There is something that 
necessitates the urgency of making the choice one way or the other. You see, we've looked out for you when you've done some bullshit. And believe you me, you've done some bullshit. That we had to do CYA in a big way for you, the American. We're not doing that anymore. We're not going to cover your ass anymore. You're on your fucking own. We're cutting the strings, so to speak. We're divesting. You're on your own out there, Americans. And let me tell you something. It's a scary world. There's 9 billion people on this planet. There's only 330 million Americans. There's 9 billion people on this planet. And there's only 330 million Americans. Let me break some more news to you. Nobody likes you Americans. They hate the purple people's out. As much as they hate you, they might hate me just a titch less. Because deep down inside, they know that I hate you fuckers. But they don't give a fuck. They hate you because, well, you've done some real fucked up shit. That's where we go back to the CYA. We've covered your fucking ass. But we're not doing it anymore. We're done. No more negotiations. No more talks. No more lies. Because we know that's what you do. You lie. We're done. So, if we're not going to cover your ass anymore, when you're on your own, you got to make this choice. It's the miracle of white supremacy. If I had to call it, it's like a flip of the coin almost. You want heads or tails? Tails is America. Heads is white supremacy. You got to call it like the river. That's what. No, Two-Face. It's Two-Face. That's why Two-Face always carried around that coin. Now I know. That's how you make decisions. Should I rob the bank or not rob the bank? Heads we rob the bank. Tails we don't rob the bank. Tails we don't rob the bank. Heads we, well, we support white supremacy. Tails we don't support white supremacy. It's up to you. Because see, America, you have two faces. You have the face that you present. And then you have the other face that you don't present. But we all know it's there. So, don't get mad. Be happy. You know, this is an American choice. So, I will say this to everybody else trying to meddle in our affairs. Cut it out. Let the Americans make a choice. Now everybody is meddling in America's affairs because, well, they want you to make a certain type of choice. And, well, it's not without good cause. We've meddled in everybody's affairs. There's, I think, 184 nations. And we've meddled in every nation's affairs. So it's pretty hard for us to look anybody in the face with a straight face, in the eyes, staring directly at them and say, cut it out. Don't meddle with our affairs. That's pretty hard to do. But I encourage everyone, don't meddle in the Americans' affairs. Let them make this choice. 
It's a binary choice. You know, they like binary things. Let them make a binary choice. Do they want their country or white supremacy? Now, I told everybody, go get some champagne. Go get some wine. Do the popcorn. Caramel popcorn. Get buttery popcorn. Whatever type of popcorn you like. Sit back in your recliner. And just watch. And wait. You'll see it. You'll see the savagery. The barbarians. That's all they do. Everybody knows what choice you're going to make, Americans. They're just waiting for you to finally do it. Good luck out there. You all stay safe. Winter is coming. Bundle up. It's going to be cold. Get your car hurts, your, your winter boots. Wear two to three pairs of socks. The main thing you want to keep warm is your feet. Keep your head and your feet warm and your whole body stays warm. It's science. Stay safe out there, Americans. Stay safe.